Slobodno. Evo ovdje mi smo obrtnici onih tradicijskih obrt koji proizvodi stare karte, replike, na jedan specifičan način, dakle tako se prije radilo da bi se karte koje nije, dok nije bilo tiska zaštitilo od vlage. Dakle, to se na pergamen papiru e, premazivalo vosko i samim tim kroz sve vremensku uvijete praktički zaštićeno, naravno, ako se baš doslovno ne potopi u moru. E, i e, prodajemo, to radimo već cirka nekih 17 godina, dakle, kao takvi, kao suvenire ili kao nekakve e, slike koje, kojima se uređuju prostor i... Što se tiče okvira, dakle, krivimo se da okviri budu u skladu s tim kartama. Dakle, ili radimo ručno izrađene okvire kao što je recimo ovaj tu dole, uh, ili su to klasični okviri, tipa ovako se trgo toči nam da bi odgovaralo izgledu te starinske karte. To naravno nije original, nego da. ovo dole originala ručni rad. A ovdje su prekrasne kopije. Da. Hvala vam, eto na sudjelovanju i lijep pozdrav. Hvala vam. Mimi vas. Može. Ne možete niš protiv da ide u dokumentarac? Nema. Ok, hvala. Ovo je za vas. To je, znači, to je ovako ručno rađeni papir. To je, znači, taj Gutenbergov stroj. I, znači, na njemu su sad iskani deset dabove. Znači, to kako se radilo prije. Eto, to je jedan za vas besplatno primjerak. Hvala vam od srca, divni ste. Ajme, joj, oduševljena sam s vas. Hvala najljepše. There is something special about making things with your own hands. I don't really know what it is, but it makes you respect people who do such things. It makes you want to learn old crafts, makes you want to learn how to do things with your own hands, how to do things in the way people have done it before. And it, it changes how you think and how you feel. And that is why I started making books uh, from scratch, from the beginning, uh, learning about bookbinding and things like that. And I realized the more books I made, well, uh, the more I learned uh, how, how difficult it once was to create uh, multiple copies of books and things like that. And it also has opened me up to experience more, uh, more like uh, to accept ideas of learning uh, other things uh, that people have done from different historic eras and such. I think it is uh, very important and it gives great significance to someone. Ono što mi danas lezimo folklorom i mitologijom nekada davno je u stvari krenulo kao, kao jedan eto, oblik zabave. U vrijeme naših prabaka i pradjedova kada još nisu postojali mobiteli, televizija, pa čak niti struja, ljudi bi se nakon obaveza, nakon dugih dana na večer okupljali i družili i često bi se prepričavale razne priče o raznim stvorenjima i događajima. Eto, interesantno je da, da neke od tih mitoloških stvorenja su eto, stvoreni upravo u funkciji zastrašivanja posebice male djece. E, stvorenja i opet događaj stvarani su kao nešto poučno, nešto je čega su ljudi izlačili korisne informacije kroz e, potpunu maštu. E, Dakle, moglo bi se reći da, da, da ta, ta mitologija i folklor u stvari imaju jedan, jedan jako interesantan psihološki aspekt e, i jednu veliku ulogu su imali u naši, našoj kulturi. E, interesantno je isto napomenuti da jako puno tih stvorenja mitoloških je, je upravo stvoreno u svrhu znači, straha i zastrašivanja.
Jel ti se sviđa čarobni štapić? Da. Što ti se posebno sviđa? Pinokio. Pinokio ti se sviđa. On ima nos kod čarobni štapić, je li tako? Da. Da. A daj mi reci, jel ti voliš one crtane o čarobnjacima i magiji i tako to? Da. A što je tako posebno u tim crtanima? Sa loli. Pa čarolije. A, koje su najbolje čarolije? Čarolija nestaje. Čarolija nestaje? Pa zašto baš čarolija nestaje? Zato što onda sve nestane. Sve nestane? Jel onda ljudi postanu nevidljivi? Ne, samo, ne, samo lopove. A samo lopove? Misliš da je to čarolija za lopove dobra? Mislim. A kako je ti priče za laku noć najviše voliš? Od supermaci, od biti malio, kako smo stavio princesi, od velikom plavom dinosavu i od onom koji nisu, a tu malom koji nije izgledao. A jel voliš priče o zmajevima? Volim. A koje su ti najbolje priče o zmajevima? Priče o zmajevima, kako vidite se džava, kako vidite se džava smaja, da ne uspiju priče. Kronike su zapravo jedan vrlo kompleksan i zaseban svijet koji se sastoji od niza malih priča koje su međusobno isprepletene i tek kad se one spoje sve zajedno, kad se spoje, onda dobijamo jednu kompleksniju sliku svega toga. I na momente će vam se čini da su neke priče, kada ih čitate zasebno, nedovršene, da su neki likovi tek onako usput spomenuti pa sad šta, ništa s njima, jel? Međutim, što više čitate i što dublje ulazite u taj barbarin svijet, to će vam stvari postajati jasnije. Ja moram reći da se ja divim barbarina kompleksnosti tih kronika i na načinu na koji je ona uspjela spojiti i povezati priče koje su najizgledne spojive. Znači, događaju se u različitim vremenskim periodima, na različitim kontinentima, likovi su različiti, međutim, ona to onako baš majstorski uspjeva spojiti u jednu i povezati nekom onako jednom, makar jednom niti, ali dovoljno da vidite vezu i da ih na kraju shvatite. Iako se te njezne knjige, kažem, mogu čitati kao zasebne priče i zapravo jesu samo dostatne i dovršene, cijelu punoću i dubinu tog, nazovimo opusa, ćete zapravo osjetiti i doživjeti tek kad ih pročitate sve. I zato vam ja toplo preporučam da pročitate sve barbarine knjige, odnosno sve koje su do sad napisane, jer ja znam da će ih biti još i da se u njezinom umu skriva još mnogo, mnogo priča iz ovog svijeta, vezano za ove kronike. I moram reći da i ja sama sa velikim nestrpljenjem čekam da ih pročitam. Pitanje je vezano za da li su čarolije iz prošlosti koje su inače rađene u stvarnosti u tvojim knjigama također stvarne ili imaju nekakvu ipak kreativno pozadinu s tvoje strane, da? Da. Saying before to so many readers, uh, a f- funny question, funny question came into my inbox earlier. Uh, whether <laughs> since uh, in the in the book called uh, Kronicharka, I uh, play a character who is a witch. So I got this question if I'm actually a real witch. Good question. Mm. Uh, also, uh, people have been wondering about the, the background of uh, magic rituals, magic, and uh, certain elements uh, related to that that were described in the series. 
in the Chronicles. And uh, well, I, I really tried. I did my best uh, to to use history as my guide. Uh, I think my history teacher would call it historia est magistralita, something like that. My Latin is totally off. <laughs> but the the yeah, I think it's better like that. But so I had readers who would say, like, I read Everwind, I liked everything in the book, except you know, there's a lot of spells in Old Norse I don't know how to pronounce, so I just skipped them. <laughs> and then there are these other readers who said, Oh, MG, so this is like a book that has actual spells in Old, Old Norse and I've never seen that in another book and I'm so super hyped, excited, uh, whatever, about it. So I had these readers as well. Uh, both both readers, I'm, I'm always happy to hear feedback, uh, positive or negative, as long as it is not trolling. I don't really like trolling. Nobody likes trolling. But an honest feedback is always welcome. So, uh, I used Old Norse in Everwind as the background language for the spells because uh, if I use Latin, everyone uses Latin. So, almost every series of book. I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing because Latin is a very old language and uh, you know, it was used uh, for things like exorcisms, which are pretty cool in movies and books. And uh, I wanted to use something a bit different. I always try, you know, you, you try as a writer to be as original as you can. <coughs> Everything has been already written and done. But you have to try to have your original ideas and implement them in, in the book in a way that other people haven't done before. So... I'm proud that uh, in, in many respects I've managed to do exactly that with my books. And uh, so that's, that's why I chose Old Norse. Yes, it is difficult to pronounce it. Yes, it is uh, not easy. Uh, but I fell in love with Old Norse even when I was like a teenager. I started reciting this uh, old poem, Frego Frogna Fjörvildi. And so on. Uh, I maybe recited it a bit more afterwards. So once I, I read it again, I forgot the words. Yeah, but yeah, it, it has that ring to it. It has that sound. And when you uh, utter a spell in old old Norse, it really, it really, you know, it it sounds cool if you can pronounce it, which I am still working my best to do. Uh, so that is why I chose old Norse uh, for spells in Everwind. However, in the box Kronicharka we have Slavic mythology and then you have uh, the character of Borya who is a Russian and uh, though he originated uh, from the Vikings and uh, you have him speaking his spells in Russian in his native tongue and then you have uh, the Kronicharka, the Chronicler, <laughs> me, uh, and the spells that I use, uh, well, are some sort of enchantments uh, that derived from fairy tales I actually read as a child, so which is also pretty cool. And uh, I, I tried when when uh, when I wrote about Slavic culture and Slavic mythology and Slavic paganism, I really, really tried to go deep into the folklore and the fairy tales and bring them to life, uh, to be inspired by them and uh, use, use this old knowledge and uh, to share it uh, in a way that hasn't been done before. Uh, so that is what I tried to do. So we have the summoning of the Svarožić. Uh, I, I remember 
uh, Svarožić uh, from uh, uh, books by Ivana Brlić Mažuranić and uh, Šuma Striborova, uh, The Forest of Stribor, or whatever they call it in the English version. I think there's an English version. Uh, which is amazing. It was it was something I read as a child and a story I really loved. But I had to be careful when I wrote my own book. I didn't want, although it is the same historical character of Svarzic, I didn't want it to 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 you know to read the same in the books. So I did something a bit different. Uh, also. Uh, as for the gods, people were wondering, how are you going to depict Slavic gods in your books? And uh, how historically accurate is this going to be? And I wondered, you know, you can't, you, you really can't be historically accurate uh, about Slavic mythology because uh, uh, there is, like I said before, so, so little of a written uh, documents uh, regarding to the myths of uh, this region. Kroničarka je nešto izvanredno. Znači, način na koje ova priča osmišljena je mene oduševio. Ta lakoća s kojom Barbara uh, spaja naš stvarni svijet sa svojim imaginarnim svijetom je fascinantna i zapravo pokazuje koliko je ona po meni izvrstan pisac. I koliko je predana to je svoje priči, koliko živite likove i svijetove i ta događanja. Knjiga je puna neočekivanih obrata i sasvim neočekivanih likova, što imaginarnih, što stvarnih, vidjet ćete. I puna je jednog vrlo zanimljivog humora. Dok se u Everwindu provlači te nordijska mitologija, u Omnahajima nas Barbara upoznaje sa indijanskim tradicijama, Ovdje nas pak uvodi u svijet slavenske mitologije i vjerovanja, koje su zapravo specifična za ovo naše područje. Jo? I također Barbara u knjigu unosi dosta elemenata iz svog privatnog života. I moram reći da od kad sam čitala tu knjigu, da sasvim drugačije gledam Barbaru i na trenutke se zapitam šta je zapravo od toga istina. A da biste vi sad znali o čemu ja pričam, e, morat ćete ipak pročitati kroničarku. Well, one of the main reasons, I think, uh, one of the main reasons uh, was that I wanted to, uh, well, first there was this dream, like uh, every book I ever wrote was born from a dream, and uh, Everwind is no different in that respect. So, when I started building this, wor this world, uh, its characters and everything, uh, I realized um, they needed, uh, since the genre is called fantasy, they needed, um, they needed something that they thought was greater than them. So, considering the characters of Everwind were placed in Scandinavia, uh, I decided that each character would have a link to one of the deities of Nordic mythology. 
and, uh, and so it began. I started writing them pieces of paper and linking them to different deities. And uh, it was a long process because uh, first I knew one thing. The language, the main language they used there was Old Norse. And uh, I also knew that they used a second language, which was English, in their everyday life. So they used Old Norse for ceremonies and uh, official, official things. <laughs> official things. Uh, but they used... Uh, Old Norse for things for things that were that was that were really important to them, and uh, somehow when I started writing the story, I realized that it was important to to make the story in a way to be to feel authentic and uh, to be believable. So I want people to read Everwind and feel like they're in Everwind and. Uh, to, to to walk around the storm guard and feel like they can see these gray walls and these characters and uh, one of the things I did which was very important to me was uh, naming of the characters each character in the book has a name that was specifically chosen just for them or their meaning so no character in the book ever been is named uh, Roger, uh, Patrick, or Donovan unless that name really has a meaning for them. Uh, also, the original names of the characters are a secret, uh, which are reveal revealed throughout the series sequels. As they call it, some of the names will be revealed in the upcoming novel called Kronicherka, the Chronicle. So, uh, by linking them to gods, I gave some of them powers like uh, Thorvald, who was linked to, as you may presume, uh, the god Thor. And uh, their c the connection of Thorvald and Thor enabled uh, Thorvald to, to become more powerful than he would have been able to become unless uh, he worshipped Thor. Uh, there were others, like uh, Soren's connection to the goddess Hel, of Helheim. And uh, it took me such a long time to find someone Soren would worship. And I picked out Hel for him because uh, in a sense, I didn't really see Soren as someone who would worship anyone because uh, I pro he probably thought too highly of himself to worship anyone else but himself. So I did it for Torvald's sake because uh, Torvald was like a father to him. So in a sense, uh, so when he worships Hell, he is remembering. Uh, the lessons Torvald taught him as a child, and he is doing it really for Torvald's sake more than his own. Uh, I think he chose Hel because uh, Hel has no power outside of Helheim. So, in a way, he chose a deity that could not interact in his daily life, but uh, <laughs> but he could worship her freely when he wanted to, just like I said, for Torvald's sake. Then we have the Enchantress, who chose not to worship the gods, for her own reasons, and uh, which makes everyone in Everwind so curious about it. Folklore of Nijena Stadu is used by hand to hand. The folklore of inspiration is, in principle, present in all genres. Zbog velike eto, dostupnosti informacija, mada u današnje vrijeme, znači upotreba interneta nam je dozvolila da budemo u 
upoznati sa mnogim kulturama svjetskim, znači posebice kroz književnost. Recimo što se tiče domaćeg folklora i inspiracije, moram napomenuti da ljudi smatraju kako je sam fantasy, folklor i tradicija nešto što je unapred definirano i autori se često uhvate u koštac korištenja folklora kao temelja svojih dijela, smatrajući da je određene smjernice će im olakšati Znači, pisanje samog dijela. Eto, tu se jako varaju. Folklor treba poštivati. Treba poštivati, znači, samo pisanu riječ i logiku koju moramo nakoristiti. I premda, recimo, možemo dati mašti zamaha, toliko moramo i dosta se poštovati te neke forme folklora. I ne možemo previše odstraniti, jer moramo imati na umu da ostavljamo... Znači, naš folklor je naše pisanje za buduće generacije. Iskrivljavanje samog folklora je, po mojem skromnom mišljenju, nedozvoljivo. Pa, zapravo sam ideju za to ime dobila čak same Barbare. U jednom našem razgovoru ja sam bila spomenula kako bi bilo zgodno da se te knjige, obzirom da su međusobno ipak povezane, da se povežu nekakvim zajedničkim imenom, i ona se složila, međutim rekla je da za sad još nije došla, nije našla nekakvo zgodno ime, jel? I ja sam tako isto poslije razmišljala, razmišljala i ništa mi zapravo nije padalo na pamet. I neko vrijeme nakon toga je prošlo i čitala sam jedno poglavlje kroničarke u, kojoj, u kojem Soren kroničarki daje ime Zmaj od Stormgarda i tu mi je zapravo ta ideja sinula, onako baš mi je u glavi. I kontaktirala sam Barbaru i rekla je, šta kažeš da to budu kronike Zmaja od Stormgarda? I ona se oduševila idejom i to je u biti to. Odakle ti ideja za opis uređenja unutrašnjosti onog dvorca u Stormgardu? The idea behind the castle. Well, I knew the original Stormguard had to be like I dreamed it. So it was a cold place on a remote location. And there was nothing nice about it. It was an orphanage for mainly traumatized, often traumatized, magical children who started attending Stormguard at the age of seven. So, the castle itself, in its original state, was a place, as the enchantress described it, of uh, gray stone, gray walls, little to no tapestry. And then, when she thinks uh, that this place is so horrible and she, she doesn't understand why they couldn't have made a more comfortable place that looks like a home for those kids, she enters her own chambers, who are, you know, speaking beautiful. They're just beautiful. They are described uh, very thoroughly in the book. And uh, they actually received a lot of positive... I actually received a lot of positive feedback uh, from my readers to how her room was described. Everyone wanted to have her room. So there are places in Stormgard who were nice and warm and cozy, but they were rare. And they were for a selected few, like uh, Cassiana's uh, quarters that were like luxurious because she was Cassiana and she could afford it. <laughs> and she was sleeping with Torval, so basically that had something to do with it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, 
privileges of being with the Archmage. Uh, but uh, eventually, in other sequels like uh, Vidar, who is to be translated uh, to English as the healer, uh, we get to see a different side to Storm God, where the inside of the castle is uh, basically transformed, magically transformed into a great forest. And when you're inside the castle, you feel like you're outside, which is people thought were was pretty pretty amazing. I thought so myself. But as I, I wanted Storm God to be a place that would grow alongside with its characters. So as the story developed, I wanted Storm God to develop as well. And since uh, for ages uh, it was like, uh, well, not like, it was uh, the throne of uh, Everwin that had a great significance too, so it had to be a place worthy of great description in the book. Any more questions? Vidar. Kako si došao na ideju da povežeš sve knjige zajedno? Znači, Omnaha je Vidar, Everwind, sve te tvoje knjige su na neki način povezane. Likovi iz jedne preljevaju se u drugu. Na, šta te je ponukalo da na taj način počneš uh, pisati svoje dijela? Well, at first there were these separate books and uh, there was Krvarođena, Bloodborne and then there were Omnohai, Trace and Shadow, Dragosina and uh, these stories were separate stories in the beginning you have to understand i started writing these stories as a teenager so as i grew up the stories grew uh, along with me and uh, i changed them i changed them as my mindset would change uh, my opinions uh, the way i thought about things uh, simply in a sense, as I grew up, my books grew up with me. I don't know how to explain it any better than that. Uh, so, one day, while I was writing Everwind, I got this crazy idea. What if I... What if I intertwined the characters? I think it's... You say it under uh, so I thought about this uh, and I thought you know what if I connected my previously published story on the high to Everwin I think people might like that I think people might feel these stories uh, more intimately if if they were they weren't sequels uh, in, in a classical way because uh, one story didn't follow the other in a in a perfect order there were they uh, each story had its own beginning its, its own story its own end and uh, you didn't really have to read Yomna High to understand uh, Everwind or Everwind to understand Yomna High though I do recommend people to to read them in a particular order just to get uh, the best of the experience but uh, the idea the idea was simply something like that hit me I know I was sitting I was writing I thought hey I could do this and so I did oh yeah I really don't know Seriously, 
I have no idea. Uh, I know, I know about uh, other books, like uh, I think I wrote Prvorodjena for about um, 11, 13 years, I know, a really long period of time. And then there was Yom Nahai, which I started about like 16, 17, and then later, like I said, my stories grew with me. So I changed them. I, I realized, oh no, this is not good. I have to do uh, this is not good. So, so I started to rewrite them and make them better and make them uh, well, more grown up. I don't know. So, which was a very good idea because today we have stories that people actually enjoy and if I left them the way they were when I wrote them as basically, like I said, teenager, they wouldn't really be that interesting. And, uh, but Everwind, no, Everwind, uh, Everwind uh, came from me in a dream while I was already in my 20s. And uh, it was the first book, the first fantasy novel I decided to write in English because I dreamed it in English so it had to be written in English which was quite a challenge believe me because uh, I've never been to an English speaking country uh, and I didn't really know how it would turn out since I couldn't afford someone to edit the books uh, so I found uh, I think one of the readers uh, from Texas I believe told me about uh, Grammarly, an application that enables you to uh, autocorrect uh, all your grammar mistakes while you write the book, and which was great. I love Grammarly so much. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, what was the question again? <laughs> Uh, ono što bi recimo mogla savjetovati autorima koliko mladim toliko i onima koji bi se htjeli upustiti u uh, pisanje ičega vezanog uz folklor i mitologiju je da se eto zbog njihovog dobra i u stvari zbog dobra naše kulture uh, drže lokalnih mitova. Uh, kako je najjednostavnije ovoga uh, saznati Znači, i postati individualan, ne kopirati, ne stvoriti taj svijet e, toliko poznatih vampira i čudovišta i svih onih eto, ko, koji su na globalnoj razini trenutno popularni. E, znači, eto, znači, moj savjet je da proučite na lokalnoj razini. Znači, ukoliko nemate članove obitelji koji su eto, stari ili koji su zainteresirani za nešto tome slično, raspitajte se u okolini. Znači, sigurno postoji netko ko se sjeća eto, predaja naših djedova i baka. E, postoje eto, neke zajednice koje, koje njeguju kulturnu baštinu, postoje uvijek knjižnice koje eto, vjerojatno imaju i neke, neke arhive. E, znači, moj finalni savjet je proučite na lokalnoj razini. Jer vjerujte mi, e, nikada neće netko iskopirati izvana, neće se dogoditi da, da, da niste originalni. Ako se držite znači, naših poznatih, uh, opet toliko nepoznatih mitova i, i, i folklora. Sama sam iskoristila jedan od tih mitova i mitoloških stvorenja u svoja dva romana. Uh, znači to mitološko stvorenje koje sam ja koristila zove se Štorka. I nekada je koristila kao sredstvo za strašivanje djece. Znači, štorka boravila na tavanima, u podrumima, u principu na svim mjestima gdje su djeca mogla nastradati, ukoliko bi otišli. Znači, istom tom pričom je mene moja baka plaćala dok sam bila mala. Ukoliko sam htjela ići na tavan, eto da se ne ozglijedim, baka je rekla da će me štorka odnijeti. I ja sam baki vjerovala. Nažalost, to je mit koji eto, u mojem podneblju polako izumire i rijetko ko više se sjeća znači, spomenute štorke. I zbog toga sam odlučila e, njoj dati jedan, jedan moderni ton, ali istovremeno ovoga spasiti od zaborava. 
Dakle, ukratko Štorka je u mojim knjigama jedan fiktivan glas šizofrenije glavne protagonistice Ere. I eto, tako simbolično ona nastavlja živjeti u tavanu ili u glavi. Strašna je, jeziva i eto, nadam se da, da barem na ovaj način neće izumriti. As much as I love exploring almost every culture, every religion, every human settlement there ever was in history and drawing from it and writing about it, one of, one of the most amazing things I have to agree with my colleague Yelena is uh, drawing from your own culture and finding inspiration in all the legends and myths uh, that uh, your own heritage holds. I think uh, it is something every author should aspire to do. Uh, I mean, I personally, I, I really don't mind if someone likes to write about anything, regardless uh, what, uh, what uh, region they choose to draw from. But uh, personally, uh, even though I, I admire greatly every folklore, every mythology there is, uh, drawing, writing a book like the Chronicler, writing a book that draws from your own mythology as well is uh, something, it was an amazing experience, an amazing journey, and something that I'm looking forward to writing about again maybe in some other book as well.